What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon video. I was gonna say Pokemon Sword and Shield, but this is technically Pokemon Legends Arceus territory, and I have to warn you guys, we do have some info on the new Pokemon, and today's video will be going over some new Pokemon that haven't been revealed yet, they've been data mined from the game uh, due to leakers, and we now have their stats. So as it turns out, despite Pokemon Legends Arceus not having any PvP, they do have the stats and abilities for these Pokemon hard-coded in, presumably to have them be able to be transferred to like Pokemon Home uh, and maybe used in other games, whether it be Gen 9 or possibly an update for Sword and Shield. So it will be possible to eventually use these Pokemon in a competitive battle, and I'm going to be taking a competitive player's perspective on uh, these Pokemon stats and abilities. So if you don't want to be spoiled on the new Pokemon, turn back now, go ahead and just watch tomorrow's video. But if you are willing to lose a little bit of, you know, of the you know, novelty of seeing these Pokemon for the first time in your playthrough, uh, go ahead and continue watching because we have their stats and their abilities and also some new ones that just haven't been announced yet. So yeah, Let's go ahead and get into this. If you guys enjoy this stay in point in time, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily VGC content and maybe, you know, Pokemon Legends RCS content. We'll see. So yeah, in three, two, one, we are gonna click on the Google Doc. So here we have every new Pokemon in the game. It's not too long of a list, but considering this isn't a new generation, I'm not terribly surprised. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here, and we're gonna start off from the top with Hisuian, and, what, Hisuian Growlithe and Hisuian Arcanine, but we're mostly just gonna focus on Arcanine. So as we can see, um, they're Fire Rock type and they have the abilities Intimidate, Flash Fire, and Justified, which those are the three abilities of regular Arcanine, uh, but the stats are a little bit different. So let me see if I can, I should be able to mess with these stats. No, I can't, okay. So we can just compare them. So Arcanine regularly, has 90 HP, 110 attack, 80 defense, 100 special attack, 80 special defense, and 95 speed, and is a pure fire type, where Hisuian Arcanine has 95 HP, 115 attack, 80 defense, 95 special attack, 80 special defense, and 90 speed. So it looks like the only major change is in the speed stat, which isn't too major. He loses some speed and gains some attack, which is, you know, expected because he turns into a rock, so he's not quite as fast. <laughs> Um, honestly, as far as a rock and fire type goes, I think this is about as good as we could have expected. It could be faster. Uh, rock and fire types are pretty, they're pretty not good. Um, Colossal is only really good because of the fact that it's able to speed boost with uh, steam engine. And Micargo isn't just, it isn't good at all. But rock and fire is like a decent defensive typing for like singles, but we're more of a VGC channel, so... Uh, Hisuian Arcanine, I, I think it's not going to outshine regular Arcanine or even Incineroar, uh, but what I will say is it might have a little bit of a niche in future VGC um, as like, I, I don't know, like maybe if you want to have an Intimidator that probably beats Incineroar, this thing will likely get access to Stone Edge. I don't believe Arcanine gets access to Stone Edge right now or even any rock moves. Uh, it might get one. Yeah, it gets no rock moves. So one would assume this thing would get Stone Edge, which uh, probably one shots an Incineroar with a crit. So that's kind of interesting. I don't think it's going to be that great, but I think it will have a niche in like a restricted dex format. Uh, or maybe it'll just be good on some particular archetypes where you need a rock type. Yeah, I mean, 90 speed as well makes it decently good for like a Choice Scarf Rock Slide user, especially with 115 attack. Uh, Justified is also interesting because uh, we can sort of pull off like a Terrakion Whimsicott thing. Uh, previously, you would see Terrakion and Whimsicott as like Tailwind plus Beat Up uh, to be really annoying. Uh, but now that Arcanine can do it, it is actually, I think, better. While it's not as fast as Terrakion, you're mainly, you're mainly relying on... Tailwind for the speed boost anyway, so uh, it gets it still gets stab rock slide and it will now get access to stab fire moves over fighting moves. So that's kind of interesting. I think that actually isn't going to be a terrible Pokemon, but it's not going to be as good as uh, many of us probably hoped. Next up is Hisuian Electrode, and this one I'm actually pretty hyped about. Um, if we look at regular Electrode, I believe this one has like absolutely no stat changes from the base Electrode. Yeah, so 60, 50, 70, 80, 80, 150. Uh, 60, 50, 70, 80, 80, 150. So it's like the exact same uh, stat wise, but it does gain uh, the new grass typing and does Electrode have three abilities? Yeah, it has the exact same three abilities, but that grass typing actually isn't gonna be that bad for it. I think it could be pretty decent in fact, um, because Electrode 
doesn't get access to energy ball. It doesn't get access to really any grass moves as far as I'm aware. But uh, grass and electric is a typing that we only saw before on Rotom Wash. And this thing now is able to resist hits from like Regieleki and other things. So I could see this thing possibly running like Volt Switch, Energy Ball. Uh, if it gets Electro Web, that would be really big for it. Uh, let me see if, yeah. Yeah, if it gets Electro Web, that'd be really decent for it in VGC. Uh, and I guess like the last move would probably just be Protect. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, really, that's all this thing is going to do. Obviously, it would run like static. Defensively, it's now able to eat an Earthquake uh, since uh, Earthquake's neutral. I believe if you had an Intimidator, I did actually build a Electrode team with uh, Mercury a while ago. Uh, you could actually eat an Earthquake from Garchomp if you Intimidated it and put a lot of um, EVs into defense. Since this thing doesn't really need the speed, you can just put like a little bit of speed into it and it can just tank hits uh, with the defensive EVs. So yeah, I think that could be okay in competitive. I don't think it's going to be a game changer. Typhlosion is actually where things get kind of interesting. If you don't know, Typhlosion and Charizard have always had the exact same stats. And the only difference between them is uh, moveset and uh, the secondary typing on Charizard being flying. So yeah, as you can see, they're literally the exact same stats, which kind of made Typhlosion like it wasn't as good as Charizard in a lot of formats, which is kind of funny. Uh, but now we actually have a difference in the fact that Typhlosion gains a ghost typing, which makes it intimidate immune, uh, not intimidate, ma it makes it fake out immune. Uh, and it has very, very different stats. So now its stats are 73, 84, 78, 119, 85, 95. And I think that's actually, I, I don't like that it gets slower, right? But it does hit quite a bit harder. And if it does still get access to Eruption, uh, Eruption plus Shadow Ball coverage isn't that bad. Uh, plus the Eruption now just gets stronger because it has 119 special attack as opposed to the previous 109. So just that extra 10 is really nice. Uh, it does get a little bit frailer, I believe, with 73 HP, 78 defense, and 85 special defense. Uh, yeah, it does get a bit frailer, which, you know, I, I guess that's whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it gets slower, but it hits harder. And that's really the only difference. I think that mainly the fact that you have likely an unflinchable eruption is going to be the main draw to Typhlosion. You can probably like specs it or scarf it. And that's going to be pretty huge. Uh, Hisuian Quillfish is dark and poison type. And this thing could actually be halfway decent, right? So if we look at Quillfish... Uh, it, it also gets an evolution, spoilers, obviously, but you were ready for spoilers. If we look at Quillfish's base stats and compare to the 65, 95, 85, 55, 55, 85, I believe they're like the exact same. But now, because Quillfish has an evolution, you can pack an Eviolite onto it. And it gets access to Intimidate. It was already decently bulky on the physical side, but now it's actually crazy bulky. You can invest more into like special defense to make sure you can tank hits, and it still hits decently hard and can just be super, super annoying, especially since it's no longer water type. Now it's poison and dark. Uh, it can do a couple of different things. It's in, it's immune to uh, prankster moves, so it can't be taunted. So if you run like toxic or something, um, you can't stop it from, you know, toxicing things. And it also gets 100% accurate toxic due to the fact that it's poison type. So that could be really big. Um, I don't think it's going to be great as an offensive Pokemon since the evolutions likely can be better in that situation. But as for an Eviolite Pokemon, this isn't bad. Like Dark Poison's a really decent typing. I believe it's only weak to uh, ground. Yeah, no, that's it's only weak to ground since Dark and Poison cover each other so well. So that's huge for it. Uh, it mainly it's only like its only downside is the fact that it doesn't hit too hard and it's uh, not good on the special side. But with Eviolite, you might as well be packing an Assault Vest, you know? Hisuian Sneasel is poison and fighting type. It's kind of like Krogunk and Toxicroak. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be that good. It has like decent stats. You definitely don't want to run Eviolite on this thing. I believe it's the exact same as a regular Sneasel, but uh, now it gets, you know, Poison Touch as like another ability uh, as opposed to, I believe, Technician. Pickpocket. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, some people might run Hisuian Sneasel for the, <laughs> for the novelty of it. Uh, Dialga and Palkia. They're kind of irrelevant as far as Lord forms go. Uh, let me see. Do they even change their stats? I believe they're the exact same. Um, so Dialga, let me just look at this. 100, 120, 120, 150, 190. Uh, 100, 100, 120, 150, 120, 90. E it just loses some attack. What? <laughs> it loses some attack in gains. Um special defense that 
that that's that that's nothing and i believe it's like the exact same thing for palkia so we're not really going to talk about those we're, we're mainly talking about pokemon that will matter for future uh vgc my bad i forgot about samurott so i have to go back and do this one in post uh but samurott here is actually going to be a dark type now uh with the same abilities as normal it has 90 hp 108 attack 80 special or 80 defense 100 special attack 65 special defense and 85 speed that special defense is super super low regular samurai actually has slightly higher special defense uh but i suppose what happened here is they decided to take that special defense those five points in special defense and along with what is it that did they like take it off its physical attack? Would they take it off of? It has 80 defense. So they took it off of its physical defense and probably one other set that I'm just missing and slapped it onto its speed uh, to allow it to just eat hits or to allow it to eat hits just a little bit worse, but be fast enough to deal damage. Uh, and while, you know, previously Samurott had a higher special attack than a physical attack, those two got switched. And I think that makes sense. Um, if it's a dark type now, Samurott would appreciate access to knockoff, uh, which would now be stab. Obviously, it's still probably going to get access to like Aqua Jet and Liquidation, which are great moves. And if it gets access to like Super Power, that could be really nice. Uh, Sacred Sword is also an option, uh, but I think that Super Power for the higher initial damage output or even close combat, if it gets that, that'd be even better. Uh, I think that could be a great move on Samurott. Uh, probably going to be more of a choice bander, if anything. Uh, if it gets access to Flip Turn, that'd be huge as well. Obviously, we don't know if it's going to get access to Flip Turn, uh, but being able to choice ban Flip Turn out of there is going to be really nice. Similar Similarly to, you know, what we'd expect from like a Basket Legion or something. Um, I think that could be great. Yeah, so Samurott is probably going to be okay, but you might want to slap an Assault Vest on that thing to make sure it doesn't get one shot by like every single Thunderbolt that comes its way. So yeah, <clears throat> so Hisui and uh, Lilligan is actually kind of interesting because we got two Grass and Fighting types in this game uh, as far as like new Pokemon go. So if we look at regular Lilligan, I don't think these guys are going to be comparable at all. 70, 60, 75, 110, 75, 90. And this one is 70, 105. So it doesn't have the same attack as uh, regular Lugan has special attack. 75 defense, same as that. Um, 50 special attack, 75 special defense. Is that where it went? No, it's the same. Is it the speed? Yeah, 105 speed. So, <clears throat> I mean, I don't think this thing's going to be amazing. Uh, it does get Hustle and Chlorophyll and Leaf Guard, so in the sun this thing can't be burned. Hustle could actually be really nasty if you if this thing gets like Hone Claws or something. Uh, as far as physical like grass type moves go, I could see Hustle um, Hustle Leaf Blade could actually be kind of nasty. Uh, if it gets close combat, Hustle close combat's kind of gross. I think this thing could be good, right? But Hustle's such a wishy-washy ability, and, you know, I guess that thing gets schooling, but it's it's a wishy-washy ability, right? Because it's like, oh, it's great if I hit it, but that's a pretty big if. I think Chlorophyll's going to be standard on this thing, probably like Chlorophyll Swords Dance, because 105 speed with Chlorophyll's nasty, dude. Especially if it still gets Sleep Powder, like, that's going to be great. It's like a physical Sleep Powder, so it's like an, a, it's an alternate to Berloom, where you trade off the super high offensive stats and spore for greater overall speed uh and now you use sleep powder instead so that's kind of cool basculin white stripe form uh rattled adaptability mold breaker this is i believe this is the same thing uh let me see i don't think it got rattled before it got reckless so yeah i mean no one really cares about this thing it's pretty much the exact same as you know the other oh wait did the other basculin get rattled is that what it was um no, neither of them did, so I guess it's just an ability change. Yeah, like, th there isn't much going on there. No one really cares about it. We want to hear about Basque Legion, you know? Zorark. Uh, Hisui and Zorark is now Normal Ghost, which is a nasty type combination because it's immune to Ghost and Normal moves uh, while also being immune to Fighting. So Normal and Ghost is actually a really great combination of typings. I believe it's only weak to Dark, and that's literally it. So that's huge for it. Uh... Zorark has never been the most bulky Pokemon, so now that it doesn't have to take as many super effective hits, that's like that's just that's just awesome. It also keeps Illusion, so uh, let's look at the stats on the original Zorark. So previously it was 60, 105, 60, 120, 60, and 105. 
where now it's 55, 100, 60, 125, 60, 110. So it looks like this thing's hitting a bit harder on the special side and is also getting a stat boost in speed, which is actually really huge. 110 is a great speed stat for sign to hit. That's literally the same as Raichu. So it's speed tying with Raichu while also being immune to fake out. Uh, and you know, like this thing is probably just gonna be like a great focus sash user. And now with the higher speed, you could even probably afford to choice specs this guy uh, as it's, you know, gonna be able to take things by surprise with illusion, as well as the fact that it like will likely go first in most of EGC games due to that high speed stat. So you can just hit it with like a choice spec shadow ball, or if it gets like a, a new equivalent to night days, I guess it would get like a ghost type version of that. So that's really, really awesome. Braviary. Hisuian Braviary is a stat spread that I'm extremely disappointed in, I will be honest with you. So it's a psychic flying type, it gets the exact same abilities as regular Braviary, and now Sheer Force is likely going to be standard, and I'll explain that uh, in a second. But it's new stat spread. If we look at Braviary. Braviary used to have 100 HP, 123 attack, 75 defense, 57 special attack, 75 special defense, and 80 speed. So it was like decently fast. It could like get away with being slower than things because of its good bulk. Uh, and it hit pretty hard. 123 attack, also defiant, meaning you don't want to intimidate this guy. Like that's huge. The fact that it keeps defiant means that they aren't willing to completely make you use like a, a special attacking Braviary but now it has 83 attack, so it's not as good on the physical side. Defiant could still work, right? But you're definitely gonna get more value out of sheer force special attackers. Uh, so yeah, so this thing being psychic flying means it's definitely gonna get access to like hurricane or air slash along with psychic. Um, and it's kind of bulky, like 110 with 70 in both defenses. It's not as bulky as before. And that's that kind of sucks, but I guess like the main thing that happened here is most of the stats came away from the attack stat and a little bit in bulk and so they can dump it all into the special attack i would rather have 57 physical attack and like 125 special attack but we don't have that we have 112 and it also got slower which kind of sucks but i guess now it makes it a decent trick room setter but it's also going to get tailwind it's it's in that like speed stat where it's too fast for trick room and too slow for tailwind and that kind of sucks but i will say 112 special attack I guess the best thing I can compare this to is uh, Nido King. Nido King is a phenomenal special attacker despite only having 85 special attack because of the fact that it can use sheer force and a life orb. A move set that Braviary can likely run with sheer force and a life orb uh, now that it's a psychic flying type is probably going to be for one psychic. Psychic has, um, let me see if I can just use Zoroark for this one. No, I'll just open up uh, an Alakazam so I can show you guys the stats of these moves. So Psychic is a 90 base power move uh, that has a 10% chance to lower the target special defense by one stage. Now, because of sheer force, it loses that 10% chance and instead gets a free life orb on that. So it has a 30% boost in power. So 30% of 90 is like 30. So now it's a 120 base power move with the life orb boost on top of it. Because if you don't know, sheer force moves will also ignore the, the side effect of life orb. So you basically hide the life orb behind it. And now it also gets... Hurricane. So Hurricane is a 110 base power move with a 30% chance to confuse the target. If Hisuian Braviary is in rain, nothing is taking this Hurricane off of like a modest 112 special attack Hurricane. Like that is going to be absurd with Life Orb and Sheer Force. And that's like the big thing, right? That's like the big thing about it. But I don't know if that speed stat is really going to help it out much. Like it's, it's so middling that it's hard to probably find a place for it on a team in the future but i still think that it will hit like a truck and that's gonna be nasty uh so yeah sligu and gudra they now became dragon steel types i don't really care about sligu i mean you could probably run eviolite sligu and it could be kind of it could be kind of annoying but gudra is the big thing here right so previously gudra was really really average it was kind of good in certain formats like vgc 17 uh you're able to run like a gudra with like an assault vest and use it as like a sludge bomb tapu killer but now it is an even better dragon type because it gets steel dragon steel is a phenomenal typing it's literally only weak to fighting and ground and this thing has the like it has the tools to deal with fighting and ground types so sap sipper overcoat gooey it already had sap sipper and gooey Hydration is now changed to Overcoat, so this thing is now immune to powder moves. It will ignore Rage Powder, it will ignore Spore, it will ignore Sleep Powder. That's probably going to be standard on this guy. Uh, but I guess you could also ignore powder moves by running Sap Sipper, since most <laughs> most uh, powder moves are uh, also Grass-type. So I suppose if you want to 
prevent redirection in particular overcoats gonna what you're gonna be what you're gonna want to run uh but sap sipper is gonna be what you'll run on like you know a physical attacking variant of this thing with um the intention of you know not really caring about redirection so yeah 80 hp 100 attack 100 defense 110 special attack 150 special defense 60 speed what changed well basically it got 100 defense <laughs> here so as you can see uh the defense got boosted to 100 while i believe the speed stat went down from 80 uh and i believe something else got lowered i mean the hp went up oh no the hp went down so it went from 90 to 80 and i guess it just becomes more overall bulky rather than just uh rather than just like funneling into special defense it's going to be able to take hits from everything but i think that if we have a dragon steel type gudra with the wide move pool that it has right now obviously it'd probably get like flash cannon or something uh as well as draco meteor it's probably also going to keep flamethrower and it's probably going to get like every other coverage move it gets like ice beam this thing is going to be disgusting in VGC in a future format, I think. I think Hisui and Gujo is going to be nasty. Uh, my main fear with these new Pokemon is that, hey, what if, you know, we don't get access to them in the very next game since we, you know, don't get every Pokemon in every game now? That's my main concern with them, but I think that if we do get Gujo, it's probably going to be a very, very good Pokemon, and I'm very excited for that. Avalug. Now, Avalug is notorious for one particular season. I believe it was Series 7 of VGC where people were using Prankster Swagger Thunderous next to an own tempo Avalug. But now Avalug is no longer just Ice type, it is now Ice and Rock. I think that if Ice and Rock is gonna be any good, it has to be a fast Pokemon, but this Avalug might be able to make it work. It now gets Strong Jaw, so it's probably gonna get a couple of biting moves. Maybe it'll get some kind of exclusive new biting move, like Ice Fang. Is Ice Fang? Oh yeah, Ice Fang is a thing. Yeah, but I don't think that really matters for Strong Jaw because it's only 65 base power. Uh, but I guess, it, you know, it has decent accuracy. It's better than trying to land an Ice Skull Crash. So that could be a cool thing. Um, with 95 HP, 127 attack, 184 uh, defense, 34 special attack, 36 special defense, and 38 speed. Basically, it got faster and it got a little bit less specially defensive. And it also hits a little bit harder. So I think 127 attack is actually probably what it needed to put it over the top as not mediocre and now usable. Uh, that secondary rock typing could also make this thing pretty gross under Trick Room. Uh, I mean, obviously it doesn't like Incineroar, but now it can hit it with like a Stone Edge or a Rock Slide with Stab, and that's actually be really good for it. I don't think it's going to be amazing, but I think it will be pretty good. Uh, Hisui and Decidueye is one that I'm very interested in. Now, Decidueye had this almost, it, it's like a good ability, right? Long Reach is a good ability, but it almost never mattered for Decidueye because it mostly wanted to run a special attacking set since it couldn't get intimidated then. But now, Decidueye becomes uh, Grass Fighting rather than Grass Ghost, and it keeps Long Reach. Long Reach is basically protective pads, so let's say you were to, you know, Leaf Blade a Ferrothorn. It's going to act like you never touched it, so Iron Barbs, Flame Body, any, any one of those abilities, like Static, anything where if you make contact with it, it's like you don't make contact. And I think that's much better on a fighting type Decidueye, because now you have basically protective pads close combat on the Decidueye built into it. Uh, and that's actually really huge for a physical attacker, being able to close combat these fire types and not get burned and not get, uh, you know, Rocky Helmet chip or uh, Ferrothorn Iron Barbs chip. That's really nice. Um, its stats also change to reflect the fact that it's probably going to be a physical attacker. It goes from 78, 107, 75, 100, 170 to being 88, 112, 80, 95, 95, 60. So it can still be a special attacker. It has 95 uh, special attack if you want to run like Giga Drain and stuff. But yeah, it also gets faster. And I think that's the main thing. Like this thing wouldn't be a bad choice band Pokemon. You can literally like choice band it and there's like no downside to close combating pretty much anything. And I think that's really what matters. I think long reach uh, close combat Decidueye is going to be a really nice Pokemon. Whether it end up being good in singles or VGC is still up in the air, but that's kind of huge. Now we finally have access to Weirdeer stats. It is a normal and psychic type with the exact same abilities as regular, um, not regular, but I guess Stantler, it's pre-evolution. The fact that it keeps Intimidate is huge, especially since we are right on the high HP stat. I did a stat prediction video and I got kind of close to this thing, I think, I don't know. Uh, but it doesn't hit quite as hard as I thought it would, but it's a mixed attacker with 103 HP, 105 in both attack stats, 
72 defense, 75 special defense, and 65 speed. I think this thing is going to be okay. Normal Psychic is not a bad typing. It's immune to uh, ghost moves, which is great for the Psychic typing. And the Psychic typing makes it um, neutral versus fighting type moves for the normal typing. So I think it's going to be okay. Uh, it's an intimidating Trick Room Setter, which is probably all it's going to be used for considering it's low speed. Uh, but just the fact that it gets access to Intimidate along with you know, if we look at Stantler's move pool, we'll likely keep most of Stantler's moves. It gets Trick Room. Um, I believe it gets Skill Swap. So yeah, you could like use that to like <laughs> Skill Swap your partner and give it Intimidate so you can cycle the Intimidates over and over again without having to switch. Uh, it just gets like decent moves. I mean, like obviously you could run like Double Edge on this guy. And now that you have uh, 105 attack rather than 95 attack, that's going to be decently uh, hard hitting. So I think it could be okay. Uh, I kind of wish it got competitive instead, uh, or maybe intimidate and competitive. So there's a little bit of like a 50-50 a on, you know, team preview, but it's it's whatever. I think it's going to be okay. Cleavor is another really interesting Pokemon. It's an alternative evolution to Scyther. So rather than Bug Steel, it becomes Bug Rock. And the stats are just a little bit different from Scyther or from Scizor. So if we look at Scizor, 70 HP, 130 attack, 100 defense, 55 special attack, 80 special defense, 65 speed. Cleavor has 70 HP, 135 attack. That's literally like the main difference. It just gets a little bit better attack. Um, 95 defense, so five from defense went into attack. 45 special attack, 70 special defense, 85 speed. It's also faster, so like the special defense got lowered to be dumped into the uh, speed stat along with the special attack getting lower, but that doesn't really matter. I think this thing is going to be pretty good. Uh, Swarm, Sheer Force, Steadfast. I think what this thing is going to be decent at is just Sheer Force Rock Slide. While it can't flinch, it is a very strong move. And the only other Pokemon I believe that gets that and is able to use it okay is Rampardos. And Rampardos, while it does have a higher attack set than this thing, because, you know, Cleavor is going to be at what is it 70 85 speed you can choice ban this thing or choice scarf it and the rock slide's going to be hitting like a truck i think it's going to be okay uh i think it isn't going to be a huge metagame threat but i believe this is the first fast bug rock type that we've had uh because previously it was just like shuckle as a defensive option and like shell smashing uh crustle so this thing's gonna be kind of cool stone axe seems like an interesting move it's a high crit ratio move from the leaks so yeah, I think it's going to be a good Pokemon. Like, I think this could be a decent one. Ursa Luna is the new evolution of, um, what's it called? Uh, Ursa Ring. And I think this thing could be a metagame staple. In my opinion, I think Normal Ground is actually a really decent typing for it. Guts, Bulletproof, Unnerve, 130 HP, 140 attack, 105 uh, defense, 45 special attack, 80 special defense and 50 speed. This thing has like the stat spread of a like pseudo legendary, but it's not like this thing is this thing feels like a pseudo legendary. If we look at the improvement from Ursa Ring, it's it's night and day, right? So 90 HP, 130 attack and like 75 and everything except for speed. This thing gets slower, right? Marginally, it loses five speed. Not that Ursa, not that Ursa Ring really cared about it much, and it gets so much bulkier, especially on the physical side. 130 HP with 105 defense, that's like slacking levels of bulk. Look at slacking stats 150 HP, 100 defense. Yeah, like it, it's comparable. That is a comparable stat spread, and 140 attack is nasty, especially considering guts. You can literally give this thing like the world's strongest facade <laughs> like this thing's crazy i am personally very excited to use this thing guts boosted earthquake with stab i believe is a completely new thing i don't think we have any ground type guts users i could be wrong though uh, i just don't have any that come to mind right now let's see if anything larvitar that is it guts boosted earthquake is going to be disgusting and i'm very excited for that now basque legion is a little bit disappointing in my opinion, but I still think it could be kind of good. It has 120 HP, so it gets much bulkier. I believe I called the bulk increase uh, in my prediction video, uh, but it loses quite a bit of speed. It is now 78 speed. I was hoping for 100, but 78 isn't that bad, especially with the bulk that it has with 120 HP, um, 65 defense, 75 special defense. You can like live a hit. Despite the fact it has high HP, it's probably going to be using like a Focus Sash most of the time, if not an Assault Vest, uh, to be a little bit bulkier on the special side. And the main thing is here is it has Sexual Dimorphosis, or I think that's what the term is in nature. 
Uh, the female version is a special attacker and the male version is a physical attacker. I think that we're going to get more value out of the male version, particularly because this thing will likely get access to flip turn. Uh, in choice banding, a flip turn with, you know, a low speed stat is actually not that bad. It's like a good pivot Pokemon. We can't really compare it to Basculin here because Basculin's just completely different from this thing. But the fact that it's going to get Basculin's move pool, you know, it does get flip turn. It does get liquidation. It's likely to get um, some kind of ghost move. Like Shadow Ball is definitely going to be ran on the special version, but I don't know about the physical version. If it gets Shadow Sneak, I think Shadow Sneak is going to be huge for Basket Legion. Uh, just adaptability boosted Shadow Sneak is going to be nice, along with the fact that it still is going to get like Aqua Jet, I would assume. So two very strong priority adaptability moves. That's going to be cool. Sneeze Allure is the new evolution to Hisui and Sneasel, and it is a poison fighting type. It is actually a little bit scary in my opinion. I think this could, I think this could be kind of good. It doesn't get any really good abilities. Poison Touch is fine, uh, but it's I believe it's kind of comparable to Weavile. It's like a, it's like a cross between Weavile and uh, Toxic Croak. So if we look at them, I mean it has like the ability. Of, it has the the typing of Toxic Croak with the stats of Weavile. So Weavile has 70 HP, 120 attack, 65 defense, 45 special attack, 85 special defense, and 125 speed. This thing gets a little bit slower with 120 speed, but its attack stat gets increased to to 130. And also it's like decently specially bulky with 80 in, in HP and special defense where this thing had uh, 70 HP and 85 special defense. So this thing gets marginally bulkier on the special side because of that. Uh, on the physical side, it's not eating hit very well, but I don't think that really matters. Like it has good bulk for what it's meant to be a fast attacker. This thing's like a glass cannon, but it gets infinitely better since it no longer has to deal with the weaknesses of being an ice type. Obviously losing ice type means it isn't as good in terms of like offensive coverage, but poison fighting is still really good. Uh, like a close combat coming off of this thing is going to hurt. And if they want to switch in a fairy type, now I can hit it with like a stab poison jab. And I think that's going to be huge for it. I think Sneasler is going to be okay. I think it's going to be a good, you know, niche pick in particular metagames. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be immediately good in whatever format we play, obviously, since I have no info on that. Uh, but I think it's going to be a good Pokemon overall. Overquill, I think, might actually be outshined by its pre-evolution, uh, Hisui and Quillfish. Uh, it has the exact same abilities as uh, Hisui and Quillfish, but now its stats get increased. So I guess we look at Quillfish again here. Um, 65 HP, 95 attack, 85 defense, 55 special attack, 55 special defense, and 85 speed. This thing gets no speed boost. It's the same speed stat, uh, but it does get an increase in bulk. 65 HP gets increased to 85. Its attack stat gets increased by um, 20 points. Yeah, because it would go 105, 115. I can't do basic math. I'm a physicist, but I can't do basic math. 95 defense uh, is a 10 point increase. 65 special attack is just, it doesn't matter. It, even though it gets buffed, it doesn't really matter. And 65 special defense is technically an increase. Uh, but I think that this thing's bulk and offensive stats, they don't justify running it over an Eevee like Quillfish, in my opinion. I think you're going to get a lot more value out of Quillfish. Does Quillfish get flip turn? It doesn't. But if it ever gets flip turn, that's going to be huge for it. Now we have a strange Pokemon that no one saw coming. No one expected to get a third or not third, a fourth genie. There is a new genie in town. So let's, I guess we have to compare this to the other three genies and their forms. This is an interesting one and I don't know how to feel about it. So we have Landorus, we have Thunderous, and we have Tornadus. And now we have Enamorous, the fairy type genie. Uh, I, I don't know if it's going to be a female. I, I mean, like all the genies are male. This one might be female is like a little gimmick because it's like, hey, look, it's the girl one. Uh, but I don't know. It could be interesting. Contrary is a really cool ability for it. 74 HP, 115 attack, 70 defense, 135 special attack, 80 special defense and 106 speed. That 135 special attack is actually pretty threatening compared to the other genies, since this is the hardest hitting special attacker, um, unless you count like Sheer Force Landorus, like that could outdo it. Uh, but if this thing gets like Moonblast, and I don't think it's going to get flying moves because the other genies like don't really get flying moves beyond fly, except for, you know, Tornadus, obviously, because that's what makes it special. Um, I don't think it's going to get any really good flying moves beyond fly. Uh, so, you know, that physical attack set's not really going to matter too much, uh, but 135 special attack with like fairy coverage and maybe some other coverage moves is kind of interesting. I don't think healer is going to be good at all, but contrary will likely be pretty decent, especially if this thing ends up, it can use the physical attack stat, right? So 
let's just use like um let's use landers for example since it has er, here we'll use uh thunders for example since it has a comparable physical attack stat and bulk uh basically this thing is going to be able to run superpower and every time it superpowers its defense and attack increase and then it can combo that into like a play rough right probably you're going to want to well, you're going to want to run like protect and if it gets taunt i think that'd be a decent last move for it but fairy and fighting coverage is really really good like that is that hits a lot of things in the format or in any format really so that's kind of cool the therian form is what interests me the most about this thing though overcoat so it's going to be immune to powder moves it's going to be immune to uh redirection from rage powder that's kind of cool it keeps the same offensive stats but rather than being fast it becomes pretty bulky and fairy flying as we know when it gets bulky, it gets scary. If you're remembering Togekiss, that's why. Uh, 74 HP, 110 defense, and 100 special defense. I suppose we can compare this to Togekiss as the only other fairy type that kind of falls into this role. Uh, 85 HP, 95 defense, 115 special defense. So this thing's gonna eat every hit about as well as Togekiss since it has lower HP, but um, higher physical defense and uh, slightly lower special defense. So on the special side, it doesn't eat hits as well, but on the physical side, it eats it pretty good. Uh, I don't think that the, I don't think the defensive form is going to be that good. I think most people are going to opt for the contrary physical form since it's going to be able to, uh, you know, reverse intimidates pretty much and use superpower to its heart's content. And that is, that is a pun. Enamorous is like a love Pokemon. So yeah, I think this is going to be a pretty decent Pokemon and competitive if we ever get to use it there. But overall, I would say a trend with these things is they're not that fast. There are a couple of fast Pokemon, but it's, we're sort of getting like Alola region vibes with how slow some of these things are. Uh, but we have a good chunk of like crazy interesting Pokemon. And, you know, I want to just get your thoughts on these. I gave my thoughts on how they're going to be in competitive. Obviously, this is just like a competitive player's perspective. We don't know when we're going to get to use them in competitive. All I know is that eventually we will get to use each of these. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like in the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.